Here we will draw the different forms of intracranial herniation and learn how to distinguish epidural and subdural hematomas. First, draw the brain, cerebellum, and spinal canal. Next, indicate that the tentorium cerebelli divides the cranial vault into a supratentorial compartment, which contains the cerebral hemispheres, and an infratentorial compartment, which contains the cerebellum and brainstem. Now let's show the three forms of supratentorial herniation that exist. Indicate that in subfalcine herniation, one hemisphere herniates underneath the falx cerebri. Next, show that in uncal herniation, the medial temporal lobe, the uncus, herniates over the tentorium cerebelli, and then show that in central herniation, also known as transtentorial herniation, the diencephalon herniates directly down through the tentorium cerebelli. Next, let's show the two forms of infratentorial herniation that exist. Indicate that in upward cerebellar herniation, the cerebellum herniates upward into the supratentorial cavity, and then show that in tonsillar herniation, the cerebellar tonsils undergo downward herniation through the foramen magnum. Now let's learn how to distinguish epidural and subdural hematomas. In epidural hematoma, high pressure blood collects between the dura and skull. So show that it pushes aside the spongy brain parenchyma and forms a biconvex lens shape. Subdural hematoma collects within the loosely filled dural border cell layer. So show that this low pressure blood spreads out along the border cell layer in a crescent shape. Finally, to further help us distinguish these hematoma types, indicate that dural reflections and cranial sutures have different effects on them. Make a notation that dural reflections interrupt subdural hematomas, but do not affect epidural hematomas, whereas cranial sutures do not affect subdural hematomas, but do interrupt epidural hematomas. This concludes our diagram.